Shalom and welcome to this edition of Revealing the Truth, where we cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. I'm your host, the Reverend Rabbi Eric Walker, and author of the newly released book, The Seven Laws of Abundant Living, Lessons Learned from the Tree of Life. You can visit ignitinganation.com, scroll to the bottom of the page, put your email address in, click on the book, and read the first chapter. Get it for free right there on our website. I'm very glad that today is the day when we host the Joe Newby Hour. Uh, Joe is the author of Banned, How Facebook Enables Militant Islamic Jihad, and he is the provocateur, the proprietor, and the bloggerator of the conservative FiringLine.com. Joe Newby, welcome to Revealing the Truth and the Joe Newby Hour. Well, good morning, Eric. It's a pleasure to see you once again. It's been a while. <laughs> it, it has. Uh, we, we missed out because of the Christmas holiday, and we slipped you on in because we had uh, New Year's holidays, so we yep. kind of adjusted it because our audience and myself personally, uh, if I don't get my Joe Newby fix, uh, uh, I'm just not a happy person. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my wife says the same thing. So, <laughs> well, yeah. I appreciate that, Eric. I I hope you had a I hope you had a very happy holiday uh, season. Uh, we we're, we're experiencing a little bit of global warming up here in North Idaho right now. So, um, that's all good. You know, Al Gore and them. You know, uh, <laughs> not too long. I got a kick out of this. I got to share this with you. Uh, was that Al Gore said that all this bitter cold that we're seeing across the country, he said, that's all due to global warming. <laughs> and I have to laugh because, you know, up here in the Pacific Northwest, we have a word for that. It's called winter. <laughs> right. That's exactly right. So I got a kick out of that. I just wanted to share that with you. Well, you know, I've, uh, uh, of course, I'm a follower and a subscriber, and I encourage our audience to subscribe to the Conservative Firing Line. It is uh, uh, a ca candid, uh, in your, it really, it, 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 you should go and see if the name inyourface.com is available, <laughs> because that would be uh, exactly who you are in this. And well, thank th you. there are several <laughs> uh, stories which dovetail off of the book that you released that this is when you and I first met uh, right. back in, uh, it's, it's almost exactly one year ago today uh, right. when we launched uh, our conversation with you about the book right. Band. And right. at that time, you and I bonded, and I said, "I got to have Joe on every month. I want to have this, this, uh, uh, the the blogosphere, uh, the world of blogging is as it's it's a whole genre of its own, and it is not an alternative media source. It is a mainstream media source that is where you get." the real truth. That's where you get the real information. It's the mainstream media is advertising driven and certainly has an agenda where the conservative firing line, conservativefiringline.com, and your, in particular, your columns are very direct, very sharp, very pointed, and uh, it is updated at a uh, phenomenal rate, and you have uh, quite a few contributors that have yes, made this uh, one of the more contemporary uh, blog sites. And so that's one of the reasons we have you on every month. But there's more current relevant news about, not related to Islamic Jihad so much right. in Facebook's posturing, but they are targeting and are still involved and engaged and my first question for you, and we're going to get to the story about the pastor in West Virginia, but right. where is this coming from? Is this a Zuckerberg down, or is this a attitudinal millennial kind of, of position that says we're going to be uh, liberal, we're going to take a position against and we're going to use our algorithms 
to make sure that people are directed where we want them to go because we are thought and key influencers uh, as a main media source. Well, actually, Eric, and that's a very good question. I'm glad you asked it. Um, actually, I, I have come to the opinion that there are actually two things that drive all of this. First of all, uh, something that Dina and I uh, addressed in the book, and I've addressed uh, multiple times since, and that's federal law, which is Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, which a federal judge uh, interpreted to mean that sites like Facebook, Twitter, and so on uh, – uh, can either remove or leave up whatever they choose, uh, even if it's constitutionally protected speech. So having set that as a background, um, couple that with what I now consider to be the left's inherent uh, drive to tyranny. Uh, liberalism, in my view, simply does not uh, work or succeed if there is an alternative point of view. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg is very much, very decidedly leftist. Uh, he was caught on an open microphone uh, promising a German Chancellor Merkel uh, that he would, for example, work on ways to stifle negative stories about the migrants that are uh, currently invading Europe. Um, and that was caught and reported by CNBC. Several others have reported it. Um, so this attitude, you know, starts with Zuckerberg, uh, but then this attitude also permeates, I think, uh, Silicon Valley, as we're seeing with the video released today by James O'Keefe and, and Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, we also see this uh, with Google and, and in the lawsuit uh, that was filed against Google uh, by James uh, Damore. Uh, over what's going on there. So yes, uh, you're you're absolutely right in that. Yeah, there there is. I think an attitude within Facebook, an attitude amongst its employees, um, but all of this is driven by something, um, and I think it's Silicon Valley uh, in general, and uh, driven in part by Mark Zuckerberg and his executive team. Uh, specifically, I mean, you got to remember uh, his chief operating officer, Sheryl Sandberg. Uh, here a few years back, actually wanted to ban the word bossy from the English language. Uh, I mean, we're, we're talking George Orwell, 1984, weaponized uh, propaganda, weaponized censorship taking place here. Last month, uh, Zuckerberg decided that he was going to dedicate himself to personally uh, fixing Facebook. Uh, and what we have seen here and within the last month are several instances where uh, Christians, Christian ministries appear to have been targeted. Uh, and you have to remember, and, and your audience needs to understand, that within the world of social media, there are two what we would consider to be protected or privileged groups of individuals. One of those, of course, being Muslims. And you know, we see that with Zuckerberg's actions, with Facebook's actions. Uh, there also happens to be a second group of privileged individuals, um, protected individuals, if you will, and those are uh, those who are within the uh, radical LGBTQ, ABC, XYZ uh, community, the, the people who um, are apparently confused as to what bathroom they should use and, and so forth. Uh, those are the two primary protected groups of individuals. And within social media, uh, anybody who criticizes these two groups of protected individuals uh, can very easily find themselves banned outright, shadow banned, that is, they can post, but nobody can see them. Uh, or in some, in some cases, their accounts can be completely uh, removed and their pages completely removed. And Facebook has no problem. They've demonstrated this. They have no problem using questionable, if not downright fabricated reasons for doing this. Um, I have personally seen uh, cases where, in, in one case just recently, a pro-Trump, a very large pro-Trump page, uh, was torn down after moderators made false claims of nudity. There was no nudity in any of their posts, but that's what they were dinged for, and eventually the page was torn down. 
So that brings us to the current crop uh, bannings. Uh, there's a fellow that uh, that I heard about, thanks to uh, Pamela Geller, who did a story about this, did a blog about this. Uh, they, when this first happened to them, they sent her an email. Um, I was curious, and so I followed up and was able to talk with uh, Mr. Pinkowski for quite some time. And what happened was uh, in late December, uh, now Warriors for Christ is openly anti-LGBTQ, ABC, XYZ agenda. They're, they're adamantly opposed to that. And, and it's not that they're adamantly opposed to the individuals. They take um, the, the biblical point of view that homosexuality is an abomination before God. Yes. And they take the Christian view that, that, that is taught within the Bible, uh, it was taught by Christ, that we are to hate the sin but love the sinner. Okay, so that is that's their point of view, you know, and and I've heard Rich say uh, in his videos, you know, several times that, hey, these people are welcome to come on if they want to ask questions, if they want to learn about Christ, you know, if they want to learn about Christianity and so forth. Uh, but he doesn't, you know, want them to flout their um, their status, if you will. And back uh, during the summer. He specifically said that he didn't want people going on and using the LGBTQ uh, rainbow flag as part of their uh, profile picture, which that's his right to do that. Well, the LGBTQ community caught wind of that, and they went nuts, and they started targeting him. They, they were quite literally violating federal law by stalking him online, uh, by threatening him by threatening his family. Uh, they even mailed feces to his home. Um, the threats got so bad that he was forced to move his family from their home into another place of residence. That's how bad it was. Uh, they stalked him. They threatened him on Facebook. He reported the threats to Facebook. Facebook turned a blind eye to this because, of course, these are LGBTQ people and as such are a protected, privileged uh, class of individuals. And Facebook said, no, we see nothing wrong with this. Um, so here we are in the uh, toward the end of December. Uh, they were actually... Uh, in the middle of counseling a young woman who reached out to them who was considering suicide. She was actually contemplating suicide when this happened, and all of a sudden they lost contact. That's because Facebook tore down, unpublished their page, which at that time had over 225,000 followers. So here they are. They're in the middle of counseling this, this young lady, and all of a sudden they – they can't reach out to her. We still don't know if this young lady followed through with her desire to commit suicide. We, we don't even know if she's alive yet. Um, I'm, I've been you know, led to believe that, that there are efforts to try to find this person, but one of the problems you have with this, Eric, is that if you're, for those who don't understand Facebook, if you're not directly connected as a friend, quote unquote, if you send a message to somebody, it doesn't end up in their inbox. It ends up in what's called the other box. And generally, people don't look within those uh, other boxes. I know I don't much. And uh, so we don't even know if this if this young lady is, is alive or if she carried through with her threat. So Facebook tore down this page. And um, they set up an alternate page, a backup page. Um, now, get this, Eric. In the middle of my interview with Pastor Rich, uh, Facebook issued another ban against him. And then as almost immediately after I got off the phone with him, we talked for, oh gosh, I'd say a good hour, hour and a half. And after I got off the phone with him, I mean, almost immediately, he got banned over uh, the, the page's profile picture which was of a warrior angel in armor. Uh, according to Facebook, that somehow violated their community standards. We still don't know how or why. Um, I reached out to multiple contacts of Facebook, never heard anything back. Um, but then a, a few days later, 
the page came back up. The big page came back up. And within a couple of days after that, that page was torn down yet again and, and, and removed. It was completely deleted and removed. The backup page remained online uh, for a while. In fact, at one point, Rich was doing one of his uh, live Facebook videos, uh, which also streams to YouTube. Um, and in the middle of this uh, video, Facebook cut off his live feed. He was still able to broadcast to YouTube, but his live feed to Facebook was instantly uh, cut. So anyway, uh, a few days after that, in fact, this happened uh, yesterday, that all of a sudden the backup page came back up online. Just no rhyme or reason. Uh, Facebook sent out an email, sent out a notification saying that Warriors for Christ, which is the uh, the name of the page, uh, Warriors for Christ, um, was published again. So of course, you know we're we're waiting to see what the next shoe is. Um, Rich, by, by the way, uh, has decided that he's not taking this laying down. And so what he has done is what so many people have said needed to happen, and he has, he and his crew uh, have come up with an alternative social media site um, called Social Cross. Right. And so and so for those you know Christians you know others uh, of like mind uh, can go and and uh, and they can join in the community there and there are now i believe over 13,000 individuals uh, strong um, they're in the process i i understand of revamping the interface and and that to make it more appealing to make it more uh, useful to make it more uh, uh, you know a, a better experience for everybody involved is going to have a lot of uh, a lot of new features added but uh, I'm I'm excited to see that happen, Eric, because that's the kind of thing that uh, that needs to happen. And and just as a segue from <laughs> from that, um, Rich, by the way, is in the process. He and his attorneys are in the process of filing a lawsuit um, in West Virginia that will challenge uh, the Supreme Court Obergefell decision, the the decision that essentially legalized uh, gay marriage across the country and right. uh, there's some very interesting twists and turns in this in this case I read uh, I read the complaint it's quite interesting um, I'm, I'm now waiting for the official uh, case number docket number if you will uh, before I go live but I I just wanted to uh, give your audience that little bit of breaking news so uh, rich isn't uh, sitting on his laurels or or anything uh, of the sort uh, it, he's he's plugging uh, he's plugging ahead you know it's interesting that that there are three names that consistently come up as thought influencers in America. Mm -hmm. Zuckerberg, mm -hmm. Oprah Winfrey, <laughs> and Ellen DeGeneres. That's scary. <laughs> and all three share the same Marxist, left-wing, socialist, uh, freedom of everything, equality across the board, uh, subsidize all behaviors, anything goes. They are the Aristotles of, right. of America. Uh, right. If it feels good, do it. Well, you know, at least in their own minds, they are. I, I like to refer to them as, uh, you know, the old Clint Eastwood line, uh, being legends in their own minds. Um, you know, but, you know, this whole thing with Facebook, it, we're not finished. <laughs> You're going to love this one. Um, on Christmas Eve, I, I, have you heard of a fellow named David Rossler? I have. Okay. Okay. Well, as you're probably aware, he has come up with, I think, uh, promises to be a very stunning, very nice uh, animated, well, not animated, it's it's 3D um, movie called Orbiter, and it's a faith-based movie, and I've seen right. the trailer, and I'm very impressed with it, by the way. But anyway, on Christmas Eve, get this, he dared to do the unthinkable, 
Eric. He he posted a Christmas greeting on his Facebook page. And, um, well, this didn't sit too well with Facebook, and they instantly uh, banned him uh, and, and took his uh, personal page, personal account down as a result of this Christmas card. So there's your left's uh, tolerance. There's your left's diversity. Uh, you can think whatever you want. You can say whatever you want as long as it's uh, you know something they agree with. Uh, anyway, what makes this so bad is that it, it severely impacts his ability to be able to raise the completion funds that he right. needs to finish Orbiter. Because all of these people who, who invest in these things, they want to see what kind of social media presence you have. What kind of a following do you have? Uh, this kind of thing. I mean, we're th this guy had, I, I believe he had a page with something like over 700,000 uh, followers. And, and that's, you know, well, no, that was that's somebody else. That's David Ickes who had, who got banned, who had 700,000 followers. But still, you know, David Rossler is not your average run-of-the-mill social media user. I mean, this guy has been in the movie industry for over 35 years. Right. You know, he's done it all. I mean, if, if there's an individual that you could point to and say, he's done it, he's, you know, he's got all the T-shirts, that would be David Rossler, okay? Um, nothing that he posts is offensive to those of us with, you know, who use logic and, and reasoning, but somehow, some way, um, this Christmas card triggered, uh, the, uh, the Facebook moderators so much that they completely removed, uh, his personal profile. Um, why we still don't know. Um, he, he reported this by the way, to the national religious broadcasters who, and, and this is <laughs> another, another story, uh, they have come up with a, uh, an initiative to expose uh, online censorship of conservatives and Christians, specifically on social media sites like um, Twitter and, and Facebook. This initiative uh, asked people to go on their site and document as much as they possibly can the instances of censorship that they have experienced from these sites. And I would encourage everyone within your audience, Eric, that if you have, if you have run across this, if you can document it somehow, please go there and, uh, and, and, you know, you can Google, it's called Internet Freedom Watch, and they have a web, web page set up, and you can go there, and you can let them know the kind of censorship that, uh, that you personally have experienced. Uh, this initiative, by the way, Eric, has been uh, endorsed by none other than Senator Ted Cruz. Excuse me. You know, Joe, should I, should I be offended that our 152,000 Facebook followers and our 260,000 Twitter followers that we have not been censored yet? Should I be offended by that? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> I'd say you've been blessed. <laughs> well, I, I, well, I, that's how I would look at it because we're, <laughs> we, we, we uh, do broadcast on Facebook Live five mm -hmm. days a week. Uh, right. We are um, we average thirty five to forty tweets per day right. uh, to uh, following about two hundred sixty thousand on Twitter, one hundred fifty three thousand on Facebook, and um, uh, I had one young man try to engage me yesterday. First, mm. first negative, real negative, said uh, I was nothing but a profiteer and that uh, I was spewing complete lies. And I said, why was he attacking my beliefs? And he said, why do all Christians, anytime you question them, say you're attacking them? I said, well, if you call me somebody who's profiteering and spreading yeah. lies, I believe that qualifies under <laughs> the context of attack. Um, right. If you disagree with me, tell me what you disagree with. Or if you have a question, right. uh, please post your question. Um, so he finally came down to, uh, are you a, uh, uh, you know, do you believe in creation or Darwinism? I said, I believe in creation, but I do believe in adaptive evolution. Right. I do believe that as species face different environmental challenges that we do adapt. 
Uh, right, right. And that is not unbiblical, nor right. is that Darwinism. It is no, something that as we look at pictures and we look at fossils, we see th changes. We see feet going away and tails coming, or we see feet coming where there was, and, and, and that's adaptive to environmental condition. We see that in the Galapagos, which is untainted by human intervention. So right. uh, he kept wanting to attack, and finally I had to block him and, and hide him, but uh, uh, we've been very blessed that, that uh, the only problem we have is when we go to uh, boost a post, mm -hmm. we always get it kicked back because they say there's too much text in the post and they send us this little overlay graphic and I always write them back and say, why do you care how much <laughs> text is in my, is in my, if, if I'm willing to pay you a hundred dollars to promote right. my Joe Newby interview and it's a cover of his book and it's a couple of lines, why do you think, uh, well, because we've determined that more people will read it. Well, my $100 is my $100, okay? Right. If I'm willing to get less readership because you found, but they do have an enforcement policy, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, you can challenge it, and I have interface with them, and the ones I've interfaced with, I have to be honest, have not been unreasonable, right. uh, but they have been firm in the fact that this is our policy, although we do review our policies. Uh, right. We're talking live with Joe Newby from the uh, beautiful upper northwest United States, uh, beautiful state of Idaho. Uh, where right now the temperature is thirty something, I think. <laughs> 30, so it's it a, might it might actually get up above freezing. I've heard it's supposed to get up to about thirty eight today, but right now we've got we've got uh, well we've got snow coming down right now. So I like to uh, joke around and say, yeah, we got global warming. Since right, right, right there, because you have is, winter. Yeah, but, it's so hot here that it's snowing. But he he speaks from. Uh, a great depth of knowledge, he published a book called Banned, How Facebook Enables Militant Islamic Jihad. You can get that, click on our website, ignitingnation.com, scroll down uh, and find a copy of Banned. Uh, you can get it all over the web. Uh, it's a must read if you want to understand how Facebook operates. We're going to take a short break and when we come back, we're going to dig into more about the conservative firing line more about what Joe Newby is working on and focusing on, more about uh, Oprah Winfrey all right, in this uh, uh, Rasmussen poll of leading Donald Trump by uh, 10 points. He hasn't even been in office for a year, and they've already got his opponent 10 points ahead, uh, and it's Oprah, and I can't wait to see. I want to run for governor or a senator or a congressman so that I can win the car under my seat when Oprah <laughs> stands there to give the State of the Union address. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. Bye. Shalom. I'm the Reverend Rabbi Eric Walker, executive director of Ignitica Nation and host of the daily TV program Revealing the Truth, seen live every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Central Standard Time at www.ianbn.com and then replayed throughout the day and night via our website. All of our segments can be seen on the Igniting a Nation YouTube channel. Since our launch in January of this year, we've expanded our global reach to over 54 countries with a social media following of over 125,000. Our commitment is to bring you the most in-depth interviews with authors, subject matter experts, and thought leaders from around the world. We have interviewed guests from Israel, Brazil, England, India, and all across North America. All of our authors are featured on the Books and Media page on our website, www.ianbn.com. There you can find a direct link to the book you want to order, and we receive a small commission directly from Amazon. There is no cost to you for this service. 
In addition to our daily teachings and interviews, we make available to you the archive of all of the interviews on our YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram channels. Our live program is available from our homepage, and there is never a charge to you for any of this access. We made the decision long ago that we would remain a... Shalom and welcome back to this edition of Revealing the Truth, where we cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. I'm your host, the Reverend Rabbi Eric Walker, and we're talking uh, as we do uh, not on this time, not on this day, uh, but on another day each month, but it's still the Joe Newby Hour, uh, author of Banned, How Facebook Enables Militant Islamic Jihad, and pro uh, uh, how do we refer to you as the provocateur, the proprietor <laughs> of the conservative firingline.com, uh, a blog which is uh, really, you know, there's a lot of blogs out there, uh, right. some of them more comical than mm -hmm. others. I think that you have uh, um, I think that your comical twist on things is uh, you have aged to the point where you have earned the right to state the obvious and just right. call it plain stupid. <laughs> that's that's my goal and and for everybody who writes there we we have some more serious writers who you know do just the facts but and i've done that kind of reporting as well my my own uh you know original reports are more like that but i believe there are times when a little bit of snark can go an awful long way uh, especially when we're uh, doing, you know, like what Rush Limbaugh says, illustrating absurdity by being absurd. And and we've done that a few times, and it's been quite effective. Uh, you have, I think, one more Facebook story for me, don't you? Uh, well, this one is not necessarily Facebook, uh, but it's more geared to um, to uh, Google, actually. Oh, that, that's but, right, but the, it's, right, the censorship, but right but but it is tied into this whole censorship thing uh as, as your audience probably knows today is the day in which uh james o'keefe and project veritas uh put out a stunning explosive video uh showing where uh, twitter uh, folks have been purposefully purposefully uh shadow banning and censoring individuals uh who twitter people think are Trump supporters, conservatives, uh, possibly even Christians, and, and so forth. And it's something that we've known about for, for quite a while, uh, but we've never before until today have actually had employees of the company actually come out and essentially admit that this is what they're doing. Um, now, what what's going on, though, is that Google, with this lawsuit put forward by James Damore, the, the former engineer, who got into a bit of hot water with that diversity memo, manifesto, whatever you want to call it, that he wrote. He wasn't really off the mark with that manifesto, by the way, and I, I, you know, I don't want to get into the weeds of that, but some of the things that he has exposed about Google is downright frightening, Eric. Um, we're talking about a company that openly, actively, uh, you know, within, you know, with its employers, according to his lawsuit, uh, with what he's alleging, I'll put it that way, what he's alleging is a corporate environment in which um, folks like you and I, um, straight white people, um, are not welcome. Uh, people who support Donald Trump or who support any conservative cause are not welcome and are openly mocked, ridiculed, uh, banned, harassed. Um, and, and essentially driven out of <clears throat> their jobs. Um, it, it is truly frightening what Damore has alleged within this uh, lawsuit. And if it turns out that it's true, um, then, and I have reason to believe that, that yeah, there's, you know, that, that it may very well be true. Um, but what we're seeing here with Google, Google uh, has also been accused many, many times of censoring conservative content, um, downplaying and censoring anti-Hillary Clinton content. 
uh, and this happened throughout the 2016 election. Uh, and I was able to prove this uh, myself by doing some comparative searches between Google, uh, Yahoo, Bing, and uh, other sites like DuckDuckGo and, and so forth. Right. And, and I found these things to be true myself, that indeed um, stories from a conservative point of view are in fact being uh, censored or pushed down or, or not being pushed out as much as they should be to people who type in uh, particular uh, search terms. I've even gone so far as to put in an entire URL of one of my posts and to see it not show up within Google search engine. So what's happened now, according, there, there was a report uh, put out by the Daily Caller, according to the Daily Caller, uh, that Google is also targeting uh, primarily uh, conservative sites, prominent conservative sites, like, for example, Breitbart, Daily Caller, and so on. Mm -hmm. And they're putting up these fact checkers, these fact checks, when you uh, Google, for example, the Daily Caller, up will come a fact check. And these fact checks, according to the Daily Caller report, and as it was at the time, it was confirmed by other individuals like Alex Griswold uh, and some others, that some of these so-called fact checks were themselves uh, dubious and libelous. But yet, uh, Google does not give the same treatment to prominent liberal sites or prominent uh, mainstream media sites. And that was what the Daily Caller uh, was reporting. And this, of course, came on the heels of Demore's uh, lawsuit, uh, you know, alleging uh, this basic viewpoint discrimination that uh, allegedly, reportedly, supposedly, make sure I cover all my bases, uh, is taking place at the company. So, and this ties back to what I said at the very beginning, Eric, is that we've got two things working against us. We've got federal law, which is Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, coupled with the left's innate, inherent desire for tyranny and control. And we see this taking place on social media and big search engines and you know, more pretty much throughout all of Silicon Valley, it looks like. Um, Tucker Carlson, you know, he had an excellent, uh, you know, discussion about this here just recently where he actually called this what it is. We're talking Orwellian tyranny. That's what this is. And it's not coming from government. It's coming from Silicon Valley where they are deciding what we can see, what we can think, what we can say, and what we're allowed to put up on the Internet. When, so when, when do you think we're going to see now uh, – Google bought YouTube. Mm -hmm. When are we going to start to see um, some antitrust? Because you now have YouTube being the largest video watched uh, site in the world. You have Google that has Google AdWorks and is the largest search engine, mm -hmm. so they control what you see, where you see it, how you see it, and when you see it. That comes, starts, comes close to when I was working for the Bell System mm -hmm. for what we were involved in uh, in the telecommunications industry that wound up getting us broken up. Right. When do you think that somebody's going to start to say, you know what, there's just a little bit too much power here, um, a little bit too much control, influence? Uh, do you think that's going to happen? Do you think that's? I I think at some point something will happen. I I you know I. I don't know that we have reached the tipping point yet with all of the censorship. I suspect that before long we will. It will get to the point to where uh, average individuals, even leftists, or you know, or not leftists, but what I would consider you know classic liberals, um, 
will will say, you know, enough of this is enough. You know, um, that may happen this year. It may happen next. Who knows? I have heard rumblings that uh, that perhaps Donald Trump is interested in doing something. I don't know what. Um, we have to keep in mind, though, that there there is a difference between uh, what takes place online versus what take, took place with the phone company. Uh, you're right. You know, with the phone company, though, it was easy to break that up. Or well, easy in comparison to, to the current digital online empires that we have. Um, in that, you know, you were talking about landlines. Uh, you had clear lines of demarcation that could be addressed, put in, and so on and so forth. And those who work in, in the actual hard line, hard wire telephone company know what I'm talking about, uh, lines of demarcation. With the digital world, though, it's quite different because there are no such, you know, real clear lines of demarcation. So, you know, it's not like you can break something like that up and say you will operate in this part of the country, you, you will operate in this part of the country, and so forth. Uh, it just doesn't happen that way with the Internet. The Internet wasn't designed that way. Um, in fact, just the, the Internet was actually designed to do just the opposite, really, to make sure that you know folks in San Diego, California, could instantly communicate with somebody up in, you know, say, Bangor, Maine. Um, so it, it's very difficult, if not impossible, to do something like that. However, you are absolutely right, Eric, when you say that you know we've got a problem here with with these uh, well near monopolies. Um, Joseph Farah did, I think, a very good post at uh, WND where he noted that uh, between Google and Facebook, you're talking about um, those two companies having you know, at least 84% of all of the ad revenues online. Right. And if that's not a duopoly or, or approaches a, the point of a monopoly, I don't know what does. Um, with like you said, with Google obtaining YouTube, well, look at what YouTube has done to conservative YouTubers who try to monetize their content. Uh, they can get demonetized uh, so fast it's not even funny. Uh, Facebook does the same thing to uh, conservative bloggers. They put out these guidelines that virtually we, we, we've actually been we've been blocked from uploading to YouTube in MP4 format, which is their preferred format. We right. have not been able to upload a single video since wow. we returned from the first of the year. Wow. Uh, and we, we, we experienced in our first year, uh, we went from non-existent to a little bit below a thousand subscribers, which is incrementally uh, quite wonderful when, when compared to eight gazillion sites out there and, right. and around 60 or 70,000 views. Uh, but since we returned from break, we have not been able to upload. It says hmm. format not accepted. And we are hmm. uploading an MP4. So right. we have not been able to utilize our AdWorks, which is wow. where revenue comes from, right. uh, or be able to, to transfer from our MP4 over to our WND TV feed, which is wow. how we do it. We go up, and then we go down, and then we go over. Right. It's kind of the process right. you have to go through. We've right. been blocked. Now, wow. I, I, I'm not making the claim uh, that we've been specifically targeted, uh, mm -hmm. but Jason, our executive producer, has been making every attempt to get them on the phone to get an answer as to why their standard format is being rejected. And right. uh, our next attempt will be to get through the Office of Consumer Affairs, through the president of Google's office, to try to get them to answer the question. It could be just an innocuous programming error it could be the fact that uh, we're experiencing too rapid a growth. You know, maybe we are 
doing our job and we're ruffling some feathers. I hope so. Uh, I, I would rather it be that than uh, you don't matter at all and, and uh, you know, we don't care. Uh, right. <laughs> but uh, all of us yeah. collectively are being squeezed. Uh, right. I don't know if you saw the appeal from Joe Farah that WND is being squeezed very hard. And, we all are. Uh, you know, I'll go on record, as you know I have, that when we were, before we existed, mm -hmm. WND said, you can list yourself as a partner. We'll help give you a push up. We'll help right. launch you. We'll, we'll do front page stories on your interviews right. to help you get started because we need conservative, more conservative online talk shows. So uh, that's the highest, the highest level of integrity is when oh, somebody yes. who, who has 8 million unique visitors takes mm -hmm. an absolute nobody and right. says, you can use our logo, you can use our brand, you can use mm -hmm. our website, and we'll put you on WND TV, and we're not going to investigate you and check you out. You have a compelling right. story. You're a Jewish believer. You're an ordained rabbi. You're somebody of substance. You're a published author. We believe in you. Somebody helped me 20 years ago, and right. now I get the chance to pay it forward. And that's what Joseph Farah did for me. Yes, and, and that's one of the reasons why I'm so impressed with him and, and with WND. You know, he's been, you know, in this business since pretty much the beginning. Well, this you is, know, he this, was this one of the, the early pioneers the, this is of all 21st this. year. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry, uh, Joe. Yeah. I'm sorry, Joe. There's no coughing allowed on <laughs> revealing the truth. But you know the, the the thing though that that I've noticed and 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 I like what uh, what he had to say about that. Uh, there have been some talk about what needs to be done, and of course, Adina and I have have constantly talked about you know the Congress has to address Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. There have been some other people who put up some some fairly good ideas. One of those is uh, Paul Nalen the guy who ran against uh, uh, Paul Ryan. I've got Paul and, coming on, back yeah. on next week, uh, uh, waging the battle. Um, okay. Since uh, uh, Paul Ryan announced that uh, after the midterm elections, he was going to step down as Speaker of the House, right. uh, I wanted to get Paul back on to get his position as to whether or not that, that strengthens or weakens his campaign, because Paul right. is running again against him, right. and we would offer... Paul Ryan, uh, the same opportunity, equal time. Right. Uh, we're not FCC regulated. We don't have to do right. that, uh, but we would. Uh, right. Just we, sure. That, that, uh, but the thing is, he came up with a proposal that uh, I think is a, a good jumping off point. Uh, his proposal, and we blogged about it over at the firing line, his proposal was essentially a stop the censorship proposal, uh, you know, an idea for a bill which laid out what uh, could be in, you know, considered illegal versus what isn't. And his bill, I think, is a good first step. Uh, under that, if it were ever to become law, uh, companies like Facebook would be fined half a million dollars for every single time they censored something that is constitutionally protected. And when I read that, I thought, my gosh, if that was in place in 2015, Eric, when Facebook was targeting me, I, I mean, it, it was it was insane, and, and I describe it in the book. If that was in place when Facebook was doing that to me in 2015, Facebook would have put out, oh, let's see, 7 times 5, 35, uh, probably close to 3.5 to $5 million um, just for what they did to me personally in a period of about six months or seven months. Um, and everything else that they've done to other people. Uh, so I think, 
I think it's a good starting off point. I've heard people say, and, and I'm tending to uh, agree with the, the idea of perhaps uh, regulating Facebook and Twitter and, and big uh, social media sites like public utilities. Now, I've heard people say, oh, no, you can't do that. You know, you want the government involved? Well, you know what? Government exists. I know, and I'm a small government conservative, Eric. But I believe there are times when government has to step in, when you have clear abuses, when you have clear uh, violations of civil rights. And I think that's what this is. This is, in my view, the, the civil rights issue of our time, okay? At one, once upon a time, we had slavery in this country, mm -hmm. right? What did it take to end slavery? Yes, it took a war, but that war was what? Government action. Right. We then had laws that were what? Government action. So we ended slavery. That took government action. We ended Jim Crow. We ended segregation. That took government action. Okay? Um, we passed civil rights laws. That took government action. We stopped child labor. Okay? That took government action. Say what you want about the 40-hour work week. But it used to be a whole lot worse. Right. Right. Well, you know, what Joe, what's, 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 in, what, what's, what's interesting is, is that um, when I started in radio, I had to have an FCC license. Right. Uh, the FCC oversaw talk show, talk radio, FM radio, AM radio, DJs. Right. All of us had to be licensed, and that was done away with. Then we had the FCC come in and break up the monopoly of AT&T. Uh, mm -hmm. We still have a Federal Communications uh, Commission. Now, right. uh, in this Federal Communications Commission, uh, I would not have a problem with them having oversight over companies that have undue influence on violation of First Amendment. This, right. the, you know, who, who who is it today that enforces First Amendment violations. Okay. Well, and there you run into the thing with the First Amendment. And this is, you know, and I, and I have to confess that I got caught up in this a long time ago. The First Amendment doesn't deal with, uh, you know, corporations. Okay, that's that's pretty much been established. Correct. The First Amendment deals with, uh, you know, government entities uh, stifling speech. It, it says Congress shall make no law. Right. Um, Congress shall not do this or that. It doesn't say Facebook shall not do this or that. Correct. Okay, this is this is why I think we need to have um, you know something like a public you know treating the treating the big sites okay like public utilities where um, they are overseen they are regulated to an extent and if users such as you and I have an issue we don't go to the company right. We go to the Public Utility Commission and we say, hey, there's an issue here. We need to get it arbitrated, okay? And and if it turns out there is a civil rights issue there, then the civil rights and, and those folks, uh, people get involved and deal with it there. I, I think the best analogy that I heard, Eric, came from Mark Dice. Uh, the way he put it, and I'm going to paraphrase it here, if I may. He said, suppose, for example that the telephone company listened in to our conversation. You know, you and I are talking on the phone, the telephone company listens in and they don't like something that one of us says. And so they decide they're going to ban us from using the telephone for 30 days. Right. Or suppose the post office monitors our mail and decides they don't like something that uh, one of us received within the mail and banned us for 30 days from rescinding or receiving mail. That's Facebook today. That's Twitter today. That's what we have going on today. All right. Now, if the, if the telephone company were to do that, we have a recourse. You know, we can file a complaint with the Public Utility Commission if we have to. You know, we can we can there is somebody that we can go to to get situations resolved.
If there's a problem with our, you know, say our water utilities or our electricity, if we feel we're being wronged by those utilities, there is somebody, or, or with the, or, you know, insurance companies, there is someone that we can go to and say, hey, we've got a problem. And somebody, you know, a third party can then come in and hopefully get the situation rectified. We have none of that with social media. Now, I hear people all the time complain, well, yeah, but you want the government involved? You want the government to regulate? How dare you? We can't do that. Well, hey, look, I work for a bank, all right? Banks, uh, pharmaceutical companies, hospitals, trucking companies. I mean, there is hardly an industry in this country, Eric, that doesn't have to work within some kind of regulatory framework, all right? If any other company in the United States treated its customers or its patrons the way Facebook and Twitter treats mm. theirs, you would have armies, literally armies of regulators and attorneys, if I may say so, crawl in and out of practically every orifice they can find until the situation is rectified. We have none of that with Facebook. They do what they can. And, and let me tell you, Eric, some of the things that are being done, in my view, this is just my opinion, are, are quite literally illegal. We're talking about bans based upon forged posts. We're talking about people who are allowed to violate federal law and engage in online stalking. And Facebook allows it. Twitter allows it. You can go on Twitter any any day of the week and search kill Trump and you're going to get tweet after tweet after tweet after tweet. Um, I have documented and others have documented many times where people like Pam Geller and, and this pastor, you know, Rich Pankowski, have been literally stalked and threatened with their lives. People threatening to murder them, to rape them, to burn their house down. And what does Facebook do? Oh, I'm sorry, this doesn't violate our community standards. But yet, if you put up a post that says, I think marriage equals one man and one woman, Facebook will tear that down and ban you. It's happened. It has actually happened. So, yes, I think that there needs to be some federal oversight. I, I think probably the only way to deal with that is to first amend Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. Secondly, like, like you uh, suggested, and I think it's a good idea, uh, maybe apply some antitrust. And third, start regulating these large sites like utilities, like public utilities. Well, you're exactly right. We've been talking with Joe Newby during the Joe Newby Hour, author of Banned, How Facebook Enables Militant Islamic Jihad. Joe is back with us again uh, for the Joe Newby Hour at his regular scheduled time of 12 o'clock p.m. Central Time on February the 5th, the first Monday of every month. Joe, until we see you then, may the Lord bless all the works of your hand. Thank you so much for always being great insight, great understanding, and keeping us up to date about what's going on in the world around us. Thanks, Joe Newby, for the Joe Newby Hour. And that brings to an end to our live broadcast day, but we don't go off the air. We broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right here at the Ignited Nation Broadcasting Network, headquartered here in our studio in Birmingham, Alabama. Until we see you live, Right back here at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, Central Time, here in Birmingham, we bid you Shalom.